Hey carnivores, SP fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a Gouda meat fuel day as always. Drop a comment down below and let me know how you all are doing today. How's your carnivore progress going? I would love to know your latest updates. And if you would like to know my latest updates and follow along what I'm up to, what I'm eating daily, I love sharing on Instagram, in my stories, and in fun, informative reels. So you can connect with me there on Instagram at Steak and Butter Gal. Now for today's video, I get to feature yet another fantastic and inspiring carnivore couple, Stephen and Jane Thomas. And Steak and Butter Guy joins me in this video so that we can have a heart-to-heart carnivore couple to couple conversation and let me tell you this conversation was very open very transparent especially focusing on things that are difficult to navigate within any relationship if you're in a relationship you've probably had disagreements arguments straight up fights and when you throw in stress imbalanced hormones premenopause menopause into the mix it can blow it up into something that is Disastrous. I'm so thankful that Stephen and Jane opened up about all of their struggles that they had to overcome within their relationship and how it all boiled down to hormones, hormone health, lack of hormone health, repetition of unhealthy habits that they thought were healthy, lack of certain foods that could have helped so much with hormone healing. It's so helpful to hear from both parties of this couple what they struggled with hormonally, physically, and emotionally. We also talk a lot about popular carnivore topics because how can we not? Carnivore adaptation, cravings, sugar cravings, how to overcome that, blood tests, lab work. I personally have a great and long-term friendship with both Stephen and Jane because they are both coaches in my steak and butter gang community and if you're in the gang already you already know how amazing and brilliant Stephen and Jane are but if you are looking for help community accountability the steak and butter gang will give it to you all and all in one place off social media if you are new to carnivore or experienced and you need help troubleshooting and navigating certain hurdles you're gonna get expert guidance and advice from my team of carnivore coaches steven and jane included but also from carnivore doctors mds experts in every single field that is relevant to our health and wellness so if you guys want to read more details on my 30-day carnivore challenges go to spgmeetup.com shown on the screen or click the links down below to read more on the the details and to directly sign up and join us. So without further ado, let me invite on Stephen Thomas and his butter half, Jane Thomas. Jane and Stephen, how are you guys doing? We're doing good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I've actually done solo interviews with both of them and I will make sure to link all of the interviews I've done with Stephen and Jane down below in the description box. But this is the first time ever that I'm having them together as a couple with me and my boyfriend, Steak and Butter Guy. Mm. How did you both find Carnivore Diet? Oh. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. Okay. I'll go first. Right. Um, so we've been married eight years, just to give you some context. When I met Jane, I was a personal trainer, but I was still high carb, but believing I was healthy. This is something, you know, I was coming up to 50 and I was low fat, drinking Coke every so often. And mm -hmm. that was my vice, you know, just a can of Coke every so often. Um, but I thought everything else I was eating was, was, was great. You know, porridge or you call it oatmeal, lots of fruit, freshly squeezed orange juice. Oh, cringe egg white omelettes you know oh low fat everything just absolutely okay. everything was, was terrible she was eating eggs and bacon and uh you know wow. butter and just you know no toast and i was like wow mm. you eat a lot and and you have no fat on you whatsoever so that might have been the thing that really pushed me it was also my studies because you know the with the diabetic um side of things it was all about insulin in relation to carbohydrates, you know, and every, everything in there was the carbohydrates. So there's carbohydrates so that you need to, to medicate. So I, I sort of had an inkling that things were wrong. I decided to go low carb. I mean, Jane sort of intuitively has been low carb for many, many years. When I got to 55, I decided to go carnivore and Jane very kindly really, really supported it. And it was only going to be a 30-day experiment. Mm. So that was three and a half 
years ago. So that's a, a 30 day experiment, which has wow. been going on for three and a half years. You know, I'm really enjoying it. And obviously I trained to be a carnival coach, I was doing my physiology and health sciences degree at the same time. And it's all sort of locked in, really. Stephen likes to find all the information and get the nitty gritty and yeah. and and wants to know the whys. Yeah. I'm much more intuitive mm-hmm. and instinctive. So for years before I met Stephen, I hadn't eaten bread because it made me feel bloated. So mm-hmm. I didn't like that. But the way I was brought up was very much into you cooked with lard, you used a lot of butter. I mean, people would say to me, if you know, the few times if I was having butter on things, it would be, Oh, do you like a bit of a bit of whatever it is with your butter? Because I was having so much butter. Nice. Um, so I've I've been doing that for a long time, and it was more instinctive. And then when I met Stephen, and he was having the porridge and 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 all that sort of stuff, and I'm like, it's not good. It's not great. It's not it, instinctively. It didn't feel right for me. Mm. But you know, it was something he did. So we kind of we went with that, didn't we? Mm. And then when we got with the keto, that made a huge difference. I mean, I think to both of us, that was that was a real cutting the carbs out was a real eye opener. I hadn't eaten bread for a long time, but mm. cutting the potatoes out. In fact, we'd been keto for probably about nine or 10 months and we went out and we, you know, which I, story I, I'm I going to tell. Say, yeah. And we were, we were trying to find something to eat and I was starving. Mm-hmm. And we, and we went to this cafe and we were, we were up this big hill and there was one cafe and it was like, oh, I'm so hungry. And so they'd got sandwiches, but they were pre-packed sandwiches with nothing, you know, not even proper ham in them. You couldn't even pick them apart. Yeah. So there was, so jacket, I'm going to have a jacket potato with cheese and butter. I was keto at the time, but there was, there was literally nothing else. So I had this jacket potato and he, he said, are you going to be all right? I said, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> and we, we walked part way down this hill and I went, I'm going to have to sit down. He's like, oh, what's the matter? I said, I said, I can't go any further. <laughs> He went, yeah, what do you mean? I said, yeah. my legs aren't going to work. And literally, I had to sit down and have a snooze on his shoulder for about half an hour. Oh, wow. And then tr- and my legs literally went like lead. It was it was just, it was bizarre. So I haven't had anything like that since. That was a real eye-opener, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We both had things like that. I mean, Jane really was hit by the potato. I mean, mm. obviously way too much starch way too Mm. much glucose straight away but the other thing that happened and this is more medical for the people that really like sort of uh the nitty-gritty of numbers uh yes a long long time ago you know early when we met before i'd done all the carnival we we both went for a cac scan Mm. which is a coronary artery calcium scan which looks at the calcification of your coronary arteries we both did it at the same time so jane had come to this not thinking about health not talking about health she'd not even been in the health industry and she got a big fat zero like the consultant was like wow about the best score wow which you know no exercise i mean i mean that's changed now but at that point she didn't really exercise much apart from like pilates you know so she got a zero now i'd come into this doing all the healthy stuff been a personal mm-hmm. trainer, bodybuilding, bodybuilding, uh, middle distance running, which I now realize that's a terrible mix, an absolutely <laughs> terrible mix, just like f- um, fats and carbs. So um, I did everything wrong. But I actually remember saying to the radiologist um, just before I went into the scan, mine's going to be terrible because at this point of getting this scan, I knew the carbs would have killed me. I knew that. And the problem is, and I want to say this because there's people out there that think because they look great internally, they must be great. I now realise this is completely wrong because when I got into my qualifications for phlebotomy, I was pre-diabetic. And she just said, no way, yeah, you're going to be fine. I said, no, it's going to be horrific. It's going to be a terrible number. She wouldn't have it at all. So anyway, uh, long story short, had it and the score was 639, which wow. is pretty bad, which yes, is pretty bad. That is. And that is literally predicting you're going to have a heart attack within the next year i mean obviously we haven't Mm because we changed our way of eating it's a high number but the common denominator was way too much Mm -hmm. carbohydrate Mm -hmm. so even if you think you're eating healthy or even if you know you're eating junk you get the same result Mm -hmm. if you're eating too many carbohydrates is you know really that simple i don't smoke and i don't drink exercised all the time wasn't sedentary didn't get stressed you know i'm not a stressy sort of guy the only thing it could be is nutrition. Going to keto for me took me off my blood pressure medication. That was the other thing. Wow. I was on it 20 odd years. Yeah. And then when I went keto, um, I 
my blood pressure went down. Yeah. And it was yeah. it was quite funny because we because we have now have the blood pressure monitor and things. When when I went off it, um, we would check it every so often. And uh, if I had a um, an odd odd weekend off with the daughters, with the daughters usually they're they're a terrible influence. Twenty year olds are <laughs> terrible. Um, so if I had a few glasses of prosecco and maybe a little bit of cake on the odd occasion, yeah. um, yeah. Maxi smiling, he knows, <laughs> <laughs> and I could actually put my blood pressure up. So if I had a bad weekend, two or three oh. days later on the Tuesday or Wednesday, we would check it, and my blood pressure would be back up. Mm-hmm. go back to keto for a week and it would come back down. Jane, this is the first time I heard about your CAC score. It was mm. zero, right? And mm. if you think about it, you were the one that was being intuitive. You kind of went against the grain the whole time. Yes. And you had that zero score, whereas Stephen listened to everything. He uh, followed the science, right? He did what he thought was right. And yet he had a scan that high. For a lot of my viewers, they're not familiar with what this is. All they think about is the cholesterol, the total cholesterol, the LD the L, that's the numbers that matter. Um, Could you explain, I know this because by the way, Stephen is the go-to coach in the steak and butter game and he explains these things every single week. So I'm very well versed, but for people like my boyfriend who do not know about these things, why, why is the CAC score superior to like the average cholesterol test to tell you about your heart health? Well, it's an actual image of your coronary arteries an actual direct measurement of the calcification of those arteries. So your heart has arteries going round it, and it, uh, but you're put it, putting like a machine that you lie down and it goes through, it takes images all the way through your heart mm-hmm. by slice by slice, and then they can work out how much calcification is in there. So calcification is bad because it's like the stiffening of the artery. Um, physiologically, it is protective. It's like the body's version of a stent. It doesn't mean... Um, that's it, that's the end of your days because you can reverse it and those sort of things with diet Mm -hmm. um, or slowing the progression down, which is quite important. I want to just clarify one of the things you just said then about going against the grain and following the science. We're talking about the mainstream science, which isn't science. It's Mm -hmm. narrative-based to push, uh, you know, push Mm -hmm. eating those foods and having post and pre-workout shakes and those sort of things. The CAC is an actual scientific clinical ex- ex- experiment on a person basically because they are looking at that person and then looking at the calcification from the image and then working out as a sort of number putting an empirical bit of data onto it how bad it is and then they stratify it so if it's naught to a hundred probably not so bad mm-hmm. 200 to 300 well you might need to do something this is where bad uh, mainstream science comes in because what they're actually looking to do is not to fix you but to give you a medication that's right. that's the thing so yeah so 300 to 400 pretty awful over 400 wow you need to do something about your heart health that's yes. that's how mainstream medicine promotes it whereas once you understand it you think well all i want to do is stop the progression mm-hmm. and if i can regress it a bit through diet then that's what i'll do mm-hmm. that is very simplified Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's what it is. The most powerful thing that I've heard this far in this conversation, just being a patient listener, you know, just the discrepancy between external and internal wellness. Right? I mean, this guy was bodybuilder, and you should see some of these old pictures of this guy. I mean, you can I know. you can post them in the video. I mean, it's unreal, right? So the, to get that kind of uh, undesirable uh, test result, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. to achieve a certain physical image you know people will do outrageous things from any kind any number of invasive procedures to eating foods marketed as dream catchers to uh, (laughs) gross excess of exercise right like there's so many things that people do for the appearance without really considering and we we cover this with anthony as well you're the, the actual state of your health internally speaking on a biological level is seldom the reason why people eat what they eat or do what they do for their health so i i think that's again very powerful to reiterate if you told people you know exercising in the gym is great for your heart health it's great for you know all these things that we already know but you assure them that externally you'll experience no change You'll see gyms closing down everywhere. No one's going to go to the gym anywhere, the vast majority of people at least, right? So this misunderstanding, it would be ideal 
at a certain point in human history, if we can kind of flip the tables, unlikely, but yeah. but still, you know. This is why I'm not a millionaire personal trainer because you don't need to do so much exercising, and it, and the numbers, when you look at the actual science of what you need to do, literally, twenty minutes a week is enough to get gains. Right. As long as you work out hard at least once a week and to fatigue, you can do one set of squats, one set of bicep curls, you know, one set of deadlifts, a really quick fatiguing workout, and that is enough. Mm -hmm. That is enough. Mm -hmm. And once you get to the look you want, and this is one of the things that <laughs> this, is, this is the truth, and I tell people the truth, once you've got to the muscle mass or the image you want to look at, you can literally go, and again, this is science back. You can literally go to one ninth of the volume you were doing and s maintain all those gains for eight months, doing one ninth of what you were doing before. So once your body has got that muscle, once your body has got strong, it's really difficult to lose it. As long as you do a little bit of maintenance, but you, you, it's just really right. incredible that you could literally do sort of. 30 seconds of bicep course a week. You being a personal trainer, you know, like the traditional kind of program that trainers give is just a four by four, right? Like, let's say um, you're, you're coaching someone who's never been to the gym before. Most trainers would be like four different exercises, four sets per exercise, right? So yeah. that, that already puts you at 16 sets. And, yes. you know, I was uh, chatting with Sean Baker myself. I was just curious because he's, he's the most gargantuan man I've ever seen. This guy's like six three or six four and just totally filled out and steven you know how hard that is to do because you're quite mm -hmm. tall yourself so i was just like you know how many sets should i be looking at every time i go into gym he's like oh yeah you know 10 sets a week no more than that um mm, yeah. and he was just like yeah just hit deadlifts and squats 10 sets each a week and uh, you'll probably put on you know 10 pounds of muscle every year it's pretty easy and yes. here i was like going to the gym doing probably like you know, 10 sets a day, right? Mm, yep. So, and just having pretty bad inflammation in the joints and whatnot, and honestly not seeing that much progress. I mean, I was definitely getting somewhere, but just constantly being frustrated at the input output ratio. This is all just motivating me to not go to the gym, which is, which is fantastic <laughs> because I, I hate working out. It's the worst thing ever. You've got to work out hard. That's actually it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. And you will get, you will get the gains. You will get gains. Yeah. But you see, the bizarre thing is before I trained to be a personal trainer, when I was doing the Pilates, I enjoyed Pilates. I used to do that Pilates or yoga for stress relief more than anything else. Mm. I hated working out, hated running. I hated getting sweaty, but I wanted to look nice, but yeah. I never calorie counted ever. Oh, never yeah. calorie counted. Just never, ever did it. Too time consuming. Couldn't be bothered. I like to cook. And I just cooked fresh, natural foods. I like my I like my food too much. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I do. Yeah. I always have done. And it is about eating right. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Because when we were talking about training, then I mean, that's going above and beyond and adding muscle and you know, like mm. doing bodybuilding. But if you want to look lean and you want to look athletic, diet is is it? Mm. I mean, diet is it? Really yeah. is. If your nutrition is on point, you will start to look good because you'll lose that subcutaneous fat and your muscles will just pop out. A lot of people my age come into class and say, I want to get fit, but I've had three children, so I'm never going to get all right now. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm menopausal. Mm -hmm. Or so I'm never going to lose this weight. I'm never going to get rid of this. And they hold they hold this band of, of, of fat that they've got around here. And they, I'm never going to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can you can but but i'm oh but i'm 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 48 now i'm 50 now i'm like yeah i'm 54 i've had two kids it, it doesn't it's not about age and i think that's the thing that gets to me is the media portray this image that it's you're going to be like that mm -hmm. you know yeah, it's you, acceptable it's acceptable when you hit 40 that you're going to go a bit podgy and you're going to be like that and you're going to be a bit stressed and and you're going to get, you know, aches and pains and that. And they're normalizing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we shouldn't normalize it. We shouldn't expect to feel like that. We should feel energetic and still wanting to do things. And I think that's where if you don't like exercising for actually getting fit, actually exercising and moving, 
just to uh, stress relief mm -hmm. is yeah, is, stress, is, yeah stress relief. is is uh, I think is huge. Yeah, you get endorphins yeah. and you get so the social aspect, and it makes you feel good about yourself. Mm. There's, there is so we're not anti exercise. It's just I think it's pushed for the wrong reasons. If people really knew how simple and straightforward it was. Yes. And took your word for it. Imagine how many industries would fall. Oh, right. Yes. I mean, it's oh, let's yes. let's be real. That's never going to happen. Those people are never going to yeah. let that happen. But I believe what you're saying is true. Mm. Yeah. Now, I kind of want to make this a little bit more personal. You know, I think one of the interesting things as you two as a unit is that you have been together through various phases of your life. You've seen each other eat standard American diet or standard British diet. I don't know. What. <laughs> I don't know. What do British people eat? Uh, lots of carbs as well. Lots of Bread, carbs, yeah. Carbs. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Western diet, I think. Yeah. Western, right. yeah. Okay, standard yeah. Western yeah. diet, that's good. I like that. And then keto, right? Yeah. And then carnivore, right? Yes. So what I'm curious about is, have you seen your relationship evolve or devolve through these various phases? And if you can just compare how you guys felt as a unit and the personal ongoings between you two as you experiment yeah. with different ways of eating. Do you want me to answer that? Or do you well, I would I just like to say, I mean, it's it's it was interesting for me because at the beginning of our relationship, it was me that was sort of on the healthy route and me saying, Oh, you sh you know, less less bread, less this, you know, mm -hmm. we should do this, we should eat. No, you're all right eating the butter. You know, no, it's fine to cook with lard. You know, we don't we don't use the low fat spreads and all this. Mm -hmm. um, but then as Stephen's got into it and done the research and then he did the carnivore. So he did his 30 day carnivore experiment, which kind of exceeded the 30 days and tried to encourage me to do that. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I, I, I can't just eat meat. Yeah, I need my veg. And I really dug my heels in for quite a long time, didn't I? Yeah. And I would, I would, and then it ended up where we were cooking meat for Stephen and I was buying veg for me but because there was only me, it was going off. So I was, it was, I was throwing some of it away and then it was getting frustrating. And, and in the end, I was having half the week where I would eat just carnivore mm. and then a little bit of veg the other days. Um, and then kind of gradually, it just kind of, we don't eat the veg. I just don't eat the veg now. It's just, but it took me a long time, and and, and some of that was up here, that yeah. I, that. But what we're going to do when we go out? Yeah, you know, I and also I like cooking. I love cooking. You know, I used to love making lasagnas and and stuff like that. And even when we went keto, I would take the pasta out and I would put um, aubergine, aubergine or bacon in. Um, instead of the pasta and, and do things like that but for me for I miss the cooking I miss the making things especially for nice meals birthday meals mm -hmm. anniversary meals that sort of thing but it's got easier for my viewers who are watching who are new to the carnivore diet just started or who are still transitioning I highly recommend focusing on the electrolytes for a lot of our new carnivores, I noticed that symptoms like headaches, low energy, fatigue, and muscle cramps can be avoided when you really make sure your electrolytes are high. So make sure to salt generously on all of your meals. And if that doesn't help with your adaptation symptoms, I highly recommend leaning on some high quality, clean electrolytes. The brand that I love and always recommend is Element. Absolutely love this raw, unflavored version that they have. It is in the teal colored banner on their packaging and it is clean, zero stevia, absolutely no flavorings, fillers, colorings, dyes, simply just sodium, potassium, and magnesium measured out in appropriate quantities for you. This is what the inside of the box looks like. It comes in single packets that you can throw in your bag, take on the go anytime. And for everyone who's watching, you can get a free sample pack with any purchase if you go to the URL shown on the screen, drinklmnt.com slash sbgal. I've also linked it down below in the description box if you want a clickable link. And it's, it's interesting because things like this, the seed oils, like the vegetable oils, where I thought I was being good because I get the frying pan and I'd squirt my sunflower oil on it and think that was great. Yeah. 
And now I realise that that is not great and I need to use butter or tallow or yeah. lard. Or and I'd, I'd come in and cook, put this big dollop of lard in the middle of the pan. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember wow. thinking, you see, this is how indoctrinated you are. You literally are uh, brainwashed. I, I'm on no medications whatsoever at 58. Mm. Uh, and and all my ailments that I had, you know, have got better. So I used to always get cold. So you're talking about us as a unit. Okay. So the first year, the first winter, and this is when I was still sort of coming out of high carb, I got a really bad cold. And and Jane did the natural remedies that she'd got from, you know, her granddad. Her granddad used to do, uh, you call them herbs, we call them herbs, because there's an H. <laughs> uh, and, you know, she did all this natural stuff and got me better. And I can remember saying, this, this is amazing. Um, so, strangely enough, some of the bad things I was eating brought us closer together because she could do that, you know, I can make you better. I can I can make you feel well doing these things. Now, of course, that's lacking in our life, that being nursed, because I don't get sick. Mm. So it's it's a sort of strange thing, but I'd rather be healthy mm. and not being nursed or not yes. being assisted with uh, those you know those medicines that you would make up. I think I think for us in our relationship, the most challenging was the menopause because mm. that did really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that really screwed me up. It really did. I mean, it it just sent me. I mean, it, I think it was there was a, there was a few things going on at the same time. So we'd moved house, we'd moved to the other side of the country. I'd got one daughter living down south, a long way away. Um, I was finding that difficult. I was going through the menopause and my brain went to mush. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I, I be, before the menopause, I could drive anywhere in the country quite happily on my own, not an issue. And the menopause made me lose my confidence. So even driving into the next city when we moved here would just I just couldn't do it. I used to I used to pull off the drive and go to go and see a client and pull up on the road thinking I can't do this. Wow. I physically can't do this. And it was bizarre because I just seemed to lose the hormones just really went all over the place and it took a long time yeah to settle them down. I mean certainly I fell off the wagon several times during during that time because I went back to what um, PMT when 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 I was eating carbs, mm -hmm. I went back to having. Oh, I need chocolate. Mm -hmm. I need I need a glass of wine. I need anything. I was just it, and it was it was it was it was a very strange and horrible yeah, and time. Very forgetful and oh, very yes. clumsy. Oh, I would drop things and I would drop things and it would break and I would stand in the kitchen and cry. Wow. I'm sure that was taxing for the relationship as well. Yeah. <laughs> it was just having to <laughs> get through all that, having to get through all that together and knowing it's no one's fault, yeah. but it's just a difficult situation. Uh, the thing is, Max, you don't, we didn't know that at the beginning. You don't realize how bad it is until you're, you can pull back and look at what, look in hindsight. Hmm. Because it's, it's not like, it's not like a menopause thing. Okay. Oh, it's all menopause. It, sneaks up on you mm -hmm. so that this is for people like yourself you know you're a young couple and you might think yeah well we'll be fine mm -hmm. you don't know there's no big sign you know you don't get an email saying oh bella you're a <laughs> menopause now. Right. yeah right so, so if someone starts being a little bit erratic you don't go oh is that the menopause you just think the relationships changed you just yes. think oh that person is a little bit more erratic and then a bit more clumsy you think oh that's age so that's another thing you see the norms of society so you're mm. thinking well that person's a little bit grumpy and crotchety because they're a bit older and they're a bit clumsy because they're older and um you know not so much fun forgetful well see all these things are just they try to badge as it's just older you're older mm. uh, and also you know longer in the relationship has that has that spark gone all those sort of things uh and then as a as a guy you, you know, you're not thinking menopause ever. I mean, I, I can mm -hmm. never think of one instance where I thought, oh, all this grief is is menopause. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was us, you know, diverging basically mm -hmm. and not getting on like we used to and all this sort of stuff. 
Well, see, now, as we're talking about menopause, it seems like, well, that's really obvious, Stephen. You should, you know, now in the cold light of day, it seems obvious. When you're in it, it doesn't, you know, and, and I remember saying, you're just, you're just a different person. I can remember saying that. You are a different person. Mm. But because you're going through the menopause, Jane was like, there's no difference. Yeah, I'm not different. You're different. Oh. And because you're in it, you can't see it. I you know? understand like, yeah. yeah, when when yeah. You, when you look at a vegan influencer who's telling you something, you and it makes you want to rip your hair out because it's so obviously wrong. Yeah, they don't see that at all. They don't see what they're saying as wrong because normally they've not lived through it long enough or had problems or they've listened to just you know, like an echo chamber. They don't know they're wrong, and it's like with menopause, you don't know you're in menopause until probably someone points it out or you go and get some bloods and somebody points it out or an older person in your family goes, pulls you to one side and says, uh, Jane's going through the menopause. You probably not realized it because it sneaks up on you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the frustrating thing is I think, I think the good thing about the steak and butter gang is very, everyone's very honest. You know, the women in there mm -hmm. who get the menopause or menopausal symptoms have realized that there's something up yeah. but there could be some people in the meeting let's say there's 100 people in the meeting there might be five or six women that are clum you know become clumsy become erratic or whatever whatever the thing is that's the problem and not once have they thought well maybe it's menopause yeah you know they, they just think oh this is it this is yeah. this is, well, this is how it is. i mean i've got a friend who's who's my age i went to school with her yeah. and uh, she has other health issues as well she had to retire from through through ill health um and she's 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 managing okay, but she's um we went out without went out with them for a meal, and she's uh, we're chatting and she said, oh I've got this, and now I'm getting hot. I've got this symptom and and that symptom. And I looked at her and I went, they're the same as mine. And she oh. went, what do you mean? Well, you haven't got such and such. I went, no, but you've got the menopause. She yeah. went, it can't be. And we sat and we went through all her symptoms, and at least half of them were menopause symptoms. And because she was getting the symptoms and she got other things from her other ailments that she's got, she just assumed they were more symptoms from what she was suffering from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she didn't think that it was menopause. Yeah. So, so a lot of that was a huge relief to her because she was thinking she was she, her her issue was getting worse, and actually she was just having to deal with the menopause at the same time. Yeah. But it's it's. And that was nice because then we were kind of going through it together. So we would message each other and go, I've now got this. I'd go, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane and Stephen, when you guys were in the middle of it, and I imagine it was tough on both of you guys, um, Stephen, did you ever think that maybe nutrition can help? Maybe it's time to up the fats or tweak this or that. Did you ever think that? Uh, yeah, and we have had this conversation quite a bit, yeah. even now, because um, only I don't know six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, when when Jane did the you know the high this amount of butter, yeah. not in one go, no, <laughs> but, you know, throughout the day. But that's just representative because some people think they're on a high fat diet and they're not. I mean, that's they're pretty not. much how much butter she was eat hmm. eating over a twenty four hour period. Yeah. Um, yeah. No pun intended on the period word, but um, <laughs> she, her mood was fantastic. Wow. Absolutely okay. fantastic. Mm, Complete yeah. change. And to the point where I said that you, Jane, are the Jane I met with, with this amount of butter. Now, caveat, I'm not saying butter is going to cure people's menopause right? yeah, because we can't say that. But it certainly made a difference in our life. Just wow. that high fat. Mm. And it doesn't have to be butter either. I mean, it, mm. because some people can't cope with butter, you know, so some people right. don't like the dairy. It's still a dairy product. So you could do it with tallow or lard or suet, you know, fattier cuts of meat or whatever gets your fat intake up. Mm -hmm. But but the thing is, old habits die hard. And it, you've got to make it a habit. You've got to make it a lifestyle. Like, you know, we use this expression, whoa, this way of eating. And I think, we need to get away from that and just say, just changing your life. It's mm -hmm. got to become habit. Mm -hmm. 
love but that. I do think with the menopause, for instance, it does make a difference. That, that, yeah. You know, as an outsider, mm. not in mm. not having the menopause, but being able to be the recipient of the symptoms, right. uh, <laughs> eating the higher butter definitely makes a difference. Definitely makes a difference. Yes, it does. And I think now I'm in the position where I know the high fat helps keeping that amount of butter every day consistently is hard if i have three fatty lattes in a day i eat very little i see i see so at the minute i'm we're playing around with it a bit at the minute and trying yeah, it's still to a journey. so it's still a journey even after the menopause your hormones still still cycle the same as they do when, yes, when you were on your periods yes. so it's just different it's just your adrenals working instead of your ovaries so mm. it's and you still you still get the mood changes mm. that's and that is something i think i think a lot of women don't realize when they go through the menopause mm-hmm. i mean actually during the perimenopause the hormones are just like just yeah. constantly yeah. um but then once you've gone through that you then go back to having the cycle so i'll still have three or four days a month where i'm clumsy gotcha. <laughs> I'll still have a couple of days where I'm more emotional. Mm. So mm. it it is still so that and that surprised me. I didn't think I would get that. Mm. I I almost expected you get through the menopause and then it all kind of evens out. Mm-hmm. I don't know for some women maybe it does. For me it hasn't. Nice. So no periods, which is great, but <laughs> I'm still getting I'm still getting the hormones. Got it. So I'm 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 playing around with the fat. I just want to thank Jane really quick just for sharing that. You know, because it can be a difficult thing to share, yeah. but I really think this benefit a lot of people to hear and we aren't going through this alone. Now, you know, yeah. being hormonal is not just limited to women in menopause. You know, everyone no, I, gets I, I, everyone gets hormonal. I mean, I, I get super hormonal sometimes. I'm naturally quite irate. Um, it's... <laughs> It, it, it's gone a lot better on carnivore, but but seriously, you know, there have been times for us, for sure, both of us, let's say we have a tough day at work. And then because both of us are feeling a, a little bit uh, you know, hormonal, if you will, yeah. you know, misrepresenting yourself and also misunderstanding others because of hormones is a very lethal combination for mm. a relationship. Yes. You know, mm. because you're not presenting yourself in the light that you you'd like and you're also not really understanding your partner so it, everything can really fall apart very quickly we've we've experienced this many many times um we, we've we've had tough moments ourselves just like anyone else so totally understand what you guys mean by um you know sometimes it's like you you don't even know each other anymore and really what that is is just your hormones just going crazy so anything and everything we can do to regulate that as much as possible uh, is 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 very important yeah. as people yeah. in a relationship. I mean, on the personal training side of things, I mean, I have uh, people that use testosterone, and it makes them a different person. Oh, and God. they don't know that's that's the thing because you're in your own body. It's very difficult mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to spot that, and you'll say, "Yeah, you're a little bit more snappy, or you're a little mm-hmm. bit more aggressive." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're bigger. <laughs> you know, your muscles look <laughs> good. But um, yeah, definitely. So that's. It's just proven time and time again. I mean, before 1922, when they didn't know what insulin was, type 1 diabetics would die. I mean, even if they had 10,000 calories, 20,000 calories, they'd just waste away. Mm-hmm. As soon as they discovered insulin was able to inject a hormone into them, which they can't make, mm-hmm. they can live. I mean, so th- I mean, they are critical. Hormones are critical, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, you know, they signal around the body to, to get you to do things or get the body to do things. So if you've got, um, you, you know, you mentioned there being irate, you could get cortisol readings to see, well, when is it worse? You know, mm. um, I tend to do that with saliva because it's easy to do it throughout the day. And you might find you're a person that gets high levels of cortisol always at six o'clock in the evening. Mm. And that then you could be forensic and say, well, what happens? What's what's causing that? Now, yeah, it could be the end of the day or it could be when your boss walks in, could be when you're in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, it, it's not the hormones per se, but it is, you know, your environmental reaction mm-hmm. that makes your brain go, oh, wow, this is a fight or flight situation. Mm-hmm. So, you're, mm-hmm. so your cortisol goes up. But it could just be like caffeine. 
which is a stimulant for the adrenal cortex, which puts cortisol up. Yeah. No, but the journey changes as well, doesn't it? it I mean, especially, I mean, I mean, I think for men as well as women, um, when you get to our time of life, it does, it does change. It mm. changes because you've got teenage kids or kids going off and, and leaving home. You're getting elderly parents. Mm. You're getting um, your the, the menopause, the hormones. Um, you tend to have quite a stressful life still. Um, so for me, it's also finding um, other ways to de-stress, to yeah. try and keep the, the the stress levels down. So grounding, um, a bit of meditation, locking, finding time. Me out the house. Well, yeah, of yeah. course, that's because without saying, <laughs> I will give one tip. If 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 for, for for men out there, if your if your partner is is hormonal. Yeah. Please don't tell her you're being hormonal. <laughs> she yeah. will not thank you for it. Oh, exactly. Whether she, whether that's true or not, right, right. It's it, it's it's not a good thing to say. Stephen, do you concur? <laughs> what are your thoughts, Stephen, on that? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on my end either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quick break. Um, oh, you want to take a break? Okay. Cool. No problem. Actually, during this time, while you take a break, I'll ask some questions. Let me just take advantage of this. Jane, did you take any hormone replacement therapy? And what are your thoughts on that? Because a lot of females who are really struggling with menopause, they they find that it can be helpful. Hmm. Yeah. So when I um, first realized I was going through the menopause, I went to see the doc- my doctor and uh, asked what, what I could do. And, oh, hey, HRT, I don't want to take anything. What else can I do? No, you can take HRT. I said, I don't want to do my HRT. What are my other options? Yeah. Go and see a female doctor. So I booked in for the female doctor. What what can you do? What can I do? Exercise. Well, um, I do exercise. That's what I do as a job. Right. Okay. HRT. I don't want to do HRT. What else can you offer me? Right. Nothing. So that that was that. So we muddled along for... A couple of years. So better ask, did, did you do well, this Well, yes, okay. this is what I'm getting, this, I'm get, I'm getting to it. Okay. <laughs> uh, hormonal. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> he's on dangerous ground. Yeah. <laughs> Three or four months ago, I was really struggling again. So I was finding the hormones were were really, really going to extremes again. And I was, I was, I was finding it quite difficult. So I actually rang the GP and said, look, I'm going to try the hormones. Mm. So they, uh, so I, I got sent the patches. I did them, but I did only did them for like three days. I just couldn't cope with the thought yeah. of having something artificial going into my body. Right. We mm. shouldn't have to. There's, we should be able to change our lifestyle yeah to cope with the menopause Mm -hmm. women have been going through the menopause always yeah so it's it's not something new it's something our bodies can cope with our bodies you know our bodies can can bear children our bodies can can will change and it's i think we need to change our lifestyle rather than take HR I'm quite happy you know if, if that's somebody's choice that's fine but for me yes I yeah. want I think I feel like we should change to get onto this next stage of life because that's what our bodies are meant to do it's actually a normal part of a normal process of us getting older absolutely but I think the extreme I think the extreme symptoms are a symptom of diet and yes. nutrition okay because it isn't it's and stress yeah well, yes. yes in modern day stress because throughout history you know, literature and, uh, you know, uh, art is not full of references to women being menopausal. You know, mm-hmm. the, the great works of literature, they're not characters in there that are menopausal or exhibiting symptoms of being menopausal. So it's it's a sort of modern, the extreme, um, you know, behaviour and how things are so different, possibly a symptom of a modern diet or a modern lifestyle. Mm. So things like the his hysterectomy the name itself comes from hysteria so it was for hysterical women to stop wow. them being hysterical you know, you know so they do a his, hysterectomy as simple as that um so that's that's pretty modern and i think you know when we look at the difference that just some butter made i mean it's laughable yeah but just up in fats yes made a difference yeah it's, it's incredible 
Yeah. And, and but it was, it's also the absence of processed foods and mm. endocrine disruptors. If you want to get really sort of fancy pants about it, you know, we do try to not have you know plastics in the house and uh, okay. toiletries that are you know full of chemicals. We do all that sort of clean living. Try to get outdoors. Don't have sunscreen. Don't have uh, you know seed oils. So it's sort of you know multimodal modal really. You know, it's it. it it's not just a little bit of high fat. It's also understanding that health is many other factors. Mm-hmm. So I think people, you know, maybe struggling with the kind of a diet when they first start, there could be many things in their life that are actually holding them back. And it's not the carnivore diet. It's actually mm-hmm. the things that they're really scared to give up on. And I think things like seed oils or artificial sweeteners, all these things that are, you know, a modern invention, Mm-hmm. they can't give up and, and they just keep giving you problems i just want to note that i've never seen steven be so careful about his words <laughs> what do you mean? i just see steven talking and he's just his brain is just tur- don't say the wrong thing now don't say the wrong thing now. <laughs> well he just now said jane you're a little hormonal right now <laughs> I caught it, (laughs) but it's okay. Quick little break from the conversation. I just wanted to highlight that Steven and Jane are coaches in my Steak and Butter Gang community. The Steak and Butter Gang is a private, off social media community for anyone who wants to learn more about the carnivore diet. I have new carnivores, I have ex-vegans, I have vegetarians still in the transition going into carnivore. And of course I have my experienced and passionate carnivores who are in it for the long run. It is a community that does not judge, that is there just to support, stay accountable and inspired. Steven hosts the weekly fat loss and fitness calls where we answer any question, any concern you have regarding fat loss and fitness. Steven is literally a walking encyclopedia and you will get to learn that when you meet him in the Steak and Butter Gang. He also hosts weekly carnivore health concern calls. You can throw any concern you have about your health issues, your health in general, and he will be there to answer any questions, concerns. Coach Jane is our fabulous in-house Pilates instructor. She teaches monthly live Pilates sessions for anyone who wants a taste of Pilates. For more details, just go to sbgmeetup.com shown on the screen or click the links down below to read more and directly sign up and join us so people seem to think when you're a coach or you look reasonable or you're quite healthy that you haven't had issues in the past you haven't had temptations or you haven't got cravings and one of the reasons i love sean baker is you know he's really open about his things that he loves he, he always says if cheesecake made him healthy he would eat cheesecake you know because <laughs> he loves cheesecake right so there are things that I can look at and think, yeah, I, I love that, but I don't have to eat it. Complete and utter food freedom. It's wow. just, it's incredible. It's really, really game changing. You know, I really think that being able to perceive non-carnivore foods that you enjoy in that light is the golden benchmark of adaption, you know, because, you know, Bella, I remember when I, when I was in carnivore, she could look at foods that she used to enjoy a long time ago so for me what i've always done to stay committed is to kind of demonize those foods right but to be able to have a healthy relationship being like oh yeah i love that food but i'm not gonna eat it like i don't, I don't need to have it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i i think that is the, the the pinnacle of having adapted to this way of eating and just having a healthy and kind of sustainable relationship yeah. with your lifestyle. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't think I'm there yet. I, I still have to. It takes time, babe. Yeah. yeah but, time. you know, that also reminds me of what Jane it takes was time, saying. time, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to Jane's credit, you know, she, she was saying it, it does. It took a, a, a while, right, is what Jane was saying. It took a while. And just to clarify for some people, uh, you know, how long was a while? Because for me, a while meant like two years, right? And <laughs> hmm. It's getting easier and easier still, but still, you know, it, it took a long time. So for me, it was probably about 18 months of of dipping in and out, of being mainly oh, ketovore. I kind of, okay. I kind of, I kind of went on ketovore, no. kind of, which was a bit of a, for me, I think it was a bit of a cheat in a way, because it still meant I could kind of still do bits that I wanted to do. The, the other interview, she, she, he, yeah. he said that she, she felt like a bit like a teenager, a rebellious teenager. Don't, don't tell yeah. me. Yes, right. and I felt a bit like that. Like, sure. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do it just because you're doing it. Absolutely. But yep. actually, 
yes, I do feel better when I'm pure carnival. <laughs> um, and I, and and for me, it is still I still get the cravings, but mine is definitely hormonal. Okay. And most of the time, I'm really good. And and occasionally, I will I will kind of go. Oh, I really really want that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but I, the thing is, I know if I have it, I actually won't enjoy it like I used to. Mm-hmm. It doesn't taste the same as I used to think it tasted. Your palate really does change. Max said about demonising food that helps him to to not do it. You don't need those tactics. At some point, it just stops being a big deal it gets to the point of even stuff you used to love mm. that maybe you haven't tasted and been put off it mm-hmm. you just don't want i probably eat more variation now than i've ever eaten wow. and that's you know that's another thing that bothers me people say oh it's really restrictive you you know just eating meat and i say well what did you have for breakfast and it'll be well i, I had cereal i said well what did you have yesterday well, I had cereal because I always have. And they, they just basically fall into the trap. And they say, I, well, I always have Weetabix every morning. I'm like, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Where's your variation? Mm-hmm. And they end up when, you know, I, I'm not mean with people. When you have a conversation with someone that's eating that way, they literally have four or five different things. That's it. You know, just like the word variation is, is the, a poor choice of words. What they really mean is just having options, right? And like people love having options, especially those that they don't use, right? This extends to yeah. everything in life. So the, the moment they feel like the options are gone, they start panicking. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Life is <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. Right. For me, I try and make the meals look different. So mm. I will okay. stack yeah. the bacon and the cheese and do a cream sauce or mix different meats i mean why can't we have chicken fish and steak on the on the same plate right you know and and it i think for me it's it's that i still want to be chefy when i serve it up Mm -hmm. i don't just want to put a piece of steak on Mm -hmm. so i don't put the i don't put the sprinkling of herbs on anymore now we have a sprinkling of cheese herbs and some crunchy bacon the amount of things you can do with cheese you know, it's just sliced or grated or and the different colours of cheese. Mm-hmm. It's, I just think textures. and the different textures. Mm. It just makes mm. it it just makes it different. And fish. Yeah. Yeah. Seafood. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. The only thing I still can't eat is cod. Oh. And uh, it just seems to be the one thing I can't mm. get to eat. But when everything else in the sea is open to me, it's fantastic. So mm. that's been a big that's been a big deal. Oh, it's actually. great because I love fish. So you know, it's it's fab that we can then share that because then it's a different meal again. So it's. Uh... And if she ever wants to get rid of me, she can say this is uh, this is Bream and actually serve me cod. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> not a good one. I haven't thought that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> So oh well you guys have been truly amazing thank you for your time Stephen yeah, and james that was awesome yeah and for those who are watching this video i'm sure you guys all enjoyed it so much if you have follow-up questions for jane or Stephen or both do comment it down below if you want follow-ups part twos i am more than happy to invite them both back on they are by the way coaches in the steak and butter game you guys can interact and learn from them every single week once you join the steak and butter gang so if the audience wanted more of you please do take your turns to share where you guys can be found uh well i have a website which is www.theukcarnivore.com and there's lots of stuff on there uh i'm on instagram as the uk carnivore there is somebody called the carnivore uk who is brilliant by the way but anyway i am the uk carnivore so i have no problem on that on instagram you can also email me at zerocarbcoach at gmail.com and obviously in the meetings with you there and i have my youtube channel which is the uk carnival there you go love it and jane so i'm doing my pilates workshop on your wonderful community and i'm also at pilates jane uk at gmail.com and you can find me on instagram at pilates jane uk and if anyone wants to find Stephen's evil brother who only eats cod, you can find him at the Carnivore uh, UK. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know that account. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> oh, that's a character. Yeah. I might have to, oh, yes. you might have to, yes. I like Ooh, that. Evil twin. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you, Jane and Stephen. Thanks, guys. We will keep it. it Thanks for inviting us. 
Come of see course. us. Seriously, come see us soon. Yes. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end. Stephen and Jane are some fabulous human beings and I'm sure you can all agree after watching this whole conversation. They're both part of my team of coaches in the Steak and Butter Gang and they show up every single week live on Zoom to answer your questions, specifically in the fat loss and fitness calls that happen every single week. Stephen shows up to answer any questions any concerns, any needs for troubleshooting in those calls. Stephen also specifically hosts carnivore health concern Q&As, where you guys can throw any question to him about your personal health concerns that you want to heal or just general concerns on the carnivore diet that you would like to be cleared up and explained. And Coach Jane is our in-house Pilates instructor, and she teaches live Pilates sessions for anybody who wants to learn and feel the benefits of Pilates. Go to SBG Media up.com or click the links down below to join my next 30-day carnivore challenge. And for the upcoming November Carnivore Challenge, it will feature this unique panel of guest speakers, Dr. Brown, who is a mental health specialist and psychiatrist, Dr. Chafee, neurosurgeon and 10 plus year carnivore, Dr. Joan Ifland, who is the expert on food addiction and sugar addiction, Bart Kay, who is an expert in health science and our resident carnivore scientist, and Dr. Elizabeth Bright, who comes and visits us to answer our hormone-related questions for female hormone health and men's health. If you guys would like to submit your personal questions for any of these guests, please sign up for the next 30-day carnivore challenge, specifically the November one, because each month the guests do change. Just go to sbgmeetup.com to sign up and attend all live Zoom calls. I have to say that I've really been enjoying my experience doing these couple to couple conversations and I would absolutely love to do more as long as you guys enjoy it too. So if you think I should do more, do help me out by suggesting any carnivore couples that you think would be great as guests to speak to me and Steak and Butter Guy to have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations relevant to carnivore couples. Once I have the ideas in my head about what I can possibly film for you guys, I love posting polls to specifically target what I should do next. I post polls on Instagram and also Nunu so that you guys can have a direct say in what I should do next, what guests I should choose next, what videos and content I should film next for you guys. And sometimes also ask for your help beyond things like content and videos, more personal. So feel free to check me out and connect with me on those platforms as well. I've linked it down below in the description box if you want clickable links, but I am Steak and Butter Gal across all platforms. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell and notifications so that you don't miss my future videos. I hope you all have a good, a good rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video. SPG out.